the heck are you doing today well I know I say it a lot I kind of laugh as I say it but today is a very special day it's a first for me today I am participating in the Terry Fox walk which I do every year but this year I'm with Barbara's prosthetics so they're getting a group of people amputees and clinicians and staff and we're all gonna walk in the Terry Fox walk so that's one cool thing, but the other cool thing is it's in one of the place, favorite places that I like around here, it's Stanley Park. So this has been on my bucket list for a very long time and definitely looking forward to it. Hoping, with a little luck from you guys maybe, that the rain hauls out. Right now it's 15 degrees and you can see it's, it's pretty gray. It did rain yesterday and it rained all night. So I'm thinking, well, hopefully it rained itself out, but who knows? So I've got Kenzie and my wife Lisa behind me. They drove down on Friday night through the monsoon of rain and got here late Friday night. So we spent yesterday together and today we're doing the Terry Fox walk and then we're heading back home over the highway through hell. So it should be a great day like this. I'm curious to see major cities, what the turnout looks like, because in Kamloops, where I'm from, it was previously canceled, partly because they didn't have enough people to run the, the event, but the other the one was just the turnout. So this one should be big, being Stanley Park, Vancouver, like this should be one of the third biggest in the country, I'm hoping, so. Let's get on our way. We're leaving super early because we're worried about traffic getting down there. So, and I just missed my turn. Lovely. But we will catch up to you guys. DJ, can you please roll that intro? Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Adley. After a workplace accident, I was left as a bump knee amputee. I had a decision to make. Get busy living or get busy dying. Obviously, you only have one life, so I made a decision to get busy living, exploring every opportunity that is presented to me. Tune in every week for different adventures, both from accessibility standpoint to adventures with my family and friends. And every adventure begins with one leg at a time.
Oh, good morning, guys. We made it down here to Stanley Park, BC. It's not raining yet, fingers crossed. Hopefully you guys bring me some good luck. You guys said you would, so this has been huge on my bucket list. I really want to see the one in Vancouver and then one where Port Coquitlam, I never can pronounce it, but where Terry was born. It's, and of course, Thunder Bay where he stopped running, but I really want to participate in those runs over my lifetime. So this is one off the bucket list because I wanted to do this one in Stanley Park. So extremely honored to do this with barbers like I've I've wanted to do it with the team ever since I did the first one and this is a great opportunity so a little backstory in 2016 when I was amputated for the first time I was walking on a work safe after signing the papers to lose my leg and I saw a Terry Fox sign and it, it gave me the encouragement to keep going to hey you can do this so that's why I, the Terry Fox run and Terry Fox is so important to me. I mean, yes, he's an amputee and cancer touches all of us. I lost my mom to cancer and I've lost piles of family like you guys to cancer. So I think it's very important to keep Terry's dream alive and, and just keep it going over this next generation. Maybe I won't make it, but if it's up to me, I think I can do it. Terry Fox was an 18-year-old from British Columbia when he was diagnosed with bone cancer in his right knee. Amputation and chemotherapy left him with an artificial leg and memories of those still in the cancer ward. Kids my age and younger. And, and you just can't leave something like that and, try and forget it. And, and uh, I couldn't anyway. I had to try and do something about it. And so he did. Terry trained on his new leg for 14 months, then told his family that he would run east to west across Canada, hoping to raise $1 million for cancer research. On April 12, 1980, at the easternmost point of Canada, it began the Marathon of Hope. And Terry would do it by running 26 miles, a marathon, every single day. With his best friend Doug Allward and brother Daryl following in a support van, 21-year-old Terry would rise at 4 a.m. to run 12 miles, rest, then do 14 miles in the afternoon, seeking donations across lonely expanses of highway. In Toronto, thousands cheered him. For Canadians, Terry had become an inspirational hero. But what inspired Terry were the children he was trying so hard to help. Children like Greg Scott. I'm, I'm crying now because I, there's somebody here right now who is going through the same thing that I went through. The exact same thing, and he's only 10 years old. And I... I had the most inspirational uh, day of my life today. And so Terry gave himself an afternoon off from the Marathon of Hope to swim with Greg. It was just the fourth day off in 137 days on the road. As he approached the city of Thunder Bay on September 1st, Terry Fox had run 3,339 miles. He was on this stretch of road at this white marker when he asked to be taken to the hospital. From a stretcher, Terry shared the news of his diagnosis. The cancer had spread, and now I've got cancer in my lungs. And uh, we gotta go home and, tr and try and do some more treatment. But uh, all I can say is that if there's any way I can get out there again and finish it, I will.
this will be so cool. I, I love to see a good turnout down here. The weather's, I don't know, it's, I think it's supposed to hold out. It might be just foggy, but um, I hope, fingers crossed. So I'll catch up with you guys once the team gets here and we get started with this run. We got there super early as we were worried about parking, so we just wandered around Stanley Park. I found some stuff pretty interesting. The Terry Fox shirts this year are blue, and I'll put one up here on the screen. The red shirts mean they're cancer survivors, so mean they're living because of the cancer research. And then the shirts that I've never seen before are the purple ones. After a little bit of research, we found out the purple ones are people that are working to find a cure for cancer. They're scientists that are working in labs, so it's really cool. I don't see it in my small town in Kamloops, but down here in Stanley Park, being a major city, there is those shirts. Hey guys, so I'm still waiting for the team to get here, but I was just talking to the announcer. There's 1,500 people registered for this event here at Terry Fox Run in Stanley Park and they've raised from this event a quarter million dollars, $250,000, all towards cancer research. And if you guys don't know, Terry Fox is one of the, the foundations that take the least money out of any of the other foundations to run the Terry Fox Foundation, if that makes sense. I'll put the bloop bloop down below here, exactly what the percentage is, but such a good cause. And Terry's one of those heroes that over the years has stayed a hero there's nothing that's washed out the saying oh he cheated or anything like that like steve fonio or any other p people he's just an incredible guy and had a dream and as an amputee i can't imagine running a marathon every single day it's just it's uh, your mind just can't can't um compute that so I'll check in with you guys when the team gets here and we get started. Yeah. I think one of the things about this, this event is day? meeting people and the stories you hear. I just met this guy. And I first and they, have, the um, they have green hearts that they're wearing and I was asking about the green hearts and he says it was for a, a girl that lost her battle to cancer and every year they do the walk and they put the hearts on. So it's really, really cool to hear stories like that. And, you know, to see little kids participating in it to keep Terry's dream alive. There's the green hearts over there. Dude. Here we go, guys. We missed out the whole warm up, so. Oh. Yeah. Do you hear that, guys? Sorry, I was talking to another amputee and I missed the whole I lineup. I go like this. Oh. And I was trying to tell you, and then you're like. Murphy's Law, we missed the warm up and all the countdown, but I always take the opportunity to talk to new amputees. I think that's really, really important. When I was becoming an amputee, there wasn't a lot out there and a lot of people that would talk about it. So sometimes it's just talking through their experience and having a laugh and, you know, giving suggestions on roads that they might want to take, especially people that are unfunded. You know, it's a tough road, but without funding, it's a totally different animal. Okay. This guy to the right there that's directly in front of me, he's one of the reps for one of the prosthetic companies, which is really, really cool. On the right there is Liam, my prosthetist, you know. It's a full team atmosphere, which is really cool to see. These people are giving up their Sundays just to walk in the Terry Fox walk. After seeing the couple amputees in the group, including this girl, I wish I would have worn my leg, but... As future videos will show, my knee actually broke and then I broke another foot. So walking with my microprocessor knee just isn't an option. It's too heavy. So I really, really wish after seeing this. And I don't know if I could have done it, but I damn well would have tried. I have a YouTube channel. 
Oh. So I film everything. In, this is a 360. Yeah. So this is getting everything around. Oh, that's weird. That is. Oh, that's cool. I do like my journey, my, you know, like amputees, wheelchairs. Yeah, sure. I just did how to build a leg, you know, like it helps people. As I was walking with the OSA rep, one of the prosthetic companies, I thought I'd show you guys what route we're taking. It's it's around Lost Lagoon in Stanley Park. It's the three kilometer one we're doing. It's a fairly easy walk, but it is on uneven surface. So if I didn't have a power wheelchair, I think I would have had a little bit of issues. I thought it's important to note that any Terry Fox events, you can walk, roll, bike, whatever and you have an option of three, five, or 10 kilometer for the events. I imagine you get good at it. I think you're probably pretty good at it. Uh, <laughs> well, some are easier than others. Yeah. You know, like like this right now to the people's boring, right? Because you're looking at backs at people's heads. So you got to think of, you know, voiceover and, I don't know, I, I get people all over the world, they comment on it and amputees are like, oh, I get it, you know, it's worth it. Do you have to have like a big computer to make that happen or is it just, just kind of like just a Apple really it's an Apple computer free free software I just use CapCut free nice. and this is it's just like a cheap this isn't a GoPro this is a DJI but it's the same thing sure and that's it just up and it's got all the music right on the CapCut Fox Friday is the best day of the year for me it's it's bigger than Christmas. Hundreds of Vancouverites took to Stanley Park Sunday for the 44th annual Terry Fox Run in support of cancer research. The annual fundraiser is inspired by Fox's famous Marathon of Hope in 1980 after losing his leg to osteogenic sarcoma. Since then, over $900 million has been raised for cancer research in his name. It means so much that 44 years after Terry did his Marathon of Hope, his legacy and his dream of a cancer-free world are so still inspiring to so many people. Two-time cancer survivor Anna Solnikova with the Terry Fox Foundation says it's thanks to these fundraising efforts that she was able to survive. When I was 17, I was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, which is the same cancer that Terry Fox had. It is making a difference. It is saving lives of people like me. Runners, walkers, and bikers gathered to take on a three or 10 kilometer route throughout Stanley Park. Run organizer Ron Denishuk says he's happy to see so many people come out and carry on Terry's legacy. Lots of people are here running for someone, someone they know. I hope it just continues to grow and continues to raise money for cancer research. In Vancouver, Lawrence Stallone. Look at the dollars Seniors. per hour. <laughs> sure. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. mean if you're really big, you'll make money, but it's it's a hobby. It's Like this event, I've wanted to go to this event for years. So now I'll put out, I've got a Terry Fox collection. Okay. So I went to mile zero and, you know, got all that. Oh, geez. So I want to do this one. I want to do Port Coquitlam. Cool I never can pronounce it. Port, Port Coquitlam, cool where we, he was born. Sure. I want to do Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay is, I think, where he stopped. Stopped, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to visit that mile on the side of the road. I don't know, he's a Canadian Did you hero. Like the dip the wheel in the ocean in the, uh, <laughs> at the uh, starting point or whatever? The interesting thing was when I was in Seattle or in or Victoria. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Well, today I'm on a different adventure. I'm here in Victoria, BC at mile zero. In, in front of the Terry Fox statue here. So the importance of this statue is where Terry would have dipped his foot to complete his journey. I was going, okay, has Terry finished the run there? If he did finish it, would he have gone to like the Parliament buildings? Would it have been a, you know, a government statement? Probably not knowing the Fox, fa Fox family. It probably wouldn't have been. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, would Terry have, you know, would he have gone to Paul, the Parliament buildings? I don't think he would have. Just kind of, because uh, he, because even probably, he just probably keep running. If, if, uh, 
<laughs> running for the party. <laughs> but even they wouldn't take like corporate sponsorship, right? Sure. My employer tried to give a large donation the first year and Fox, they won't take it. So they had to do anonymous. Oh. Because they don't want to be labeled as, you know, corporate. Yeah. So the area you guys were walking around is Lost Lagoon. It's we're doing the three K today and you can see there's a lot of people. You can do the ten, the five, or the three, or the one, I think. So we're I think there's a five. So you can see this is where everybody's going. Um, on a wheelchair it's no problem. So far, they say that it does get into gravel, but pretty cool event, huh, guys? 1,500 people here in Stanley Park. and Before we finish the 2024 Terry Fox walk here in Stanley Park, I just want to give a huge shout out to my wife and Kenzie. My wife threw out her back the week before and she was in bed all week, finally got back to work on Friday, then decided to drive down here on Friday through a monster rainstorm getting down here, just because she knew how important it was to me. Kenzie's been looking forward to this for a very long time as I'm constantly talking about it. She knows how important my hero Terry Fox is, all while raising money for cancer awareness. What a great day being able to do this and being able to talk to this OSA rep the whole way and learning about different prosthetics and all the cool stuff coming down the pipeline. What a magical day. Hey there guys, so we finished the 3K for Terry. The sun's out. Awesome event, 1,500 people here. So thank you so much for going on this journey with me. We'll catch you on the next one.